All right, we're back. This is page 50 of math analysis, which is a bit of a milestone, I guess. Multiples of 10 always feel like that. So uh, we just finished graphing tangent. Prior to that, cosecant and secant. Prior to that, sine and cosine. It's really all based on sine and cosine. So if you're not good at those, go get good at those because you're going to need it. Um, so let's see what we can do here. So what is the relationship between sine, cosine, and cotangent? All right, well, let's think about this from the perspective of the one that we probably know a lot better, which is that tan of theta is definitely the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And then uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent of theta must be cosine of theta over sine of theta. All right, so this page is really big on building on what you already know. Um, and that, I think in math in general, is a really good idea. Uh, you know, if you could, if you can learn a small number of things and then generalize them, that's better than trying to learn uh, a very large number of non-generalized things, is how I kind of feel about it. So let's see uh, what more we can do. So what is the pattern for tangent? Why is it the pattern? So tangent. Uh, I'm doing the one that starts at the start, right? So it's middle, high, asymptote, low, middle. So that's, that's what we get. Now, why do we get the asymptote? So the asymptote uh, is because cosine, you're trying to divide by zero, right? Cosine of uh, theta equals zero. Therefore, tangent of theta is undefined, doesn't exist, right? So now also, why do you get the middle points, right? So the middle points, let me move this down a little so I can kind of Fit this kind of better. So the middle points you're actually going to get because, so let me see. The middle points come because sine of theta equals zero, which means that tangent of theta will equal zero. So this is useful because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, right? So since since cotangent is one over tangent, just kind of like think it through, right? So um, if cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, then any time sine is equal to zero, tangent was equal to zero. Any time sine is equal to zero, cotangent will be undefined. So if sine of theta equals zero, that means that tan of theta equals zero. So anywhere that happens, cotangent will be undefined. And this happens everywhere you're at a middle point. You always get the middle points because tangent equals zero, which means for cotangent, those are going to become your asymptotes. So that means that. Uh, M for tangent becomes A for cotangent. I'm kind of answering the, uh, the next question also, but uh, the M for tangent is going to become the A for cotangent because tangent is at the middle point because tangent is zero, and then maybe you like shift it up or whatever, um, but tangent was zero. The reciprocal is zero undefined, so you're going to get your asymptotes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if cosine equals zero, then tangent is undefined. So then cotangent, which has cosine in the numerator, will be zero. So cotan will be zero, which means that the A, the asymptote for tangent, becomes the middle point for cotangent. So the reciprocal of one is one, the reciprocal of negative one is negative one, which means the, the high point and the low point don't change. Like they're, they're still gonna be high and low. Um, so I think that we have tangent, so tangent looks like this, middle, high, asymptote, low, middle, 
based on what we just said, cotangent should look like asymptote, high, middle, low, asymptote. This is gonna be the pattern. This is actually, it's definitely right. I mean, I actually know the answers to these things when we're working them out. Uh, that is definitely right. Middle points become asymptotes, high stays high. Asymptote becomes uh, middle point, basically the A's and the M's switch, right? And the highs and lows stay the same. I think that's the easiest way to say it. So we're gonna end up using that when we graph, but first, let's just make sure you know all of the patterns, right? Because gra graphing your trig functions come down to pattern recognition. So for sine and cosine, if you think of the unit circle, you've got a really good idea, right? So you start in the middle and then you rotate counterclockwise. The Y value starts in the middle and increases. So sine must first increase. So it starts in its middle, um, which is an intercept and then increases to a maximum. So that's gonna be intercept, maximum, intercept, middle, intercept. If uh, A is negative, the, like the M's switch. Now cosine starts at a maximum that and then it'll switch. I mean, these patterns kind of look like the function, kind of, not totally, but kind of. So it's kind of helpful. Uh, this will be middle, high, SM2, low, middle. And then all that switches with a negative is highs and lows. I usually just, I really, for tangent and cotangent, I actually just know kind of like the first two and then like the pattern has to hold true. Uh, so I always like kind of think of that. And then these asymptote, high, middle, low, asymptote. Literally while I was doing that, I'm just kind of like looking at this. And then I'm gonna do the same sort of thing here where it's gonna go asymptote, low, middle, high, asymptote. And for exactly the same reason, like M's become A, A becomes M, M becomes A. High and low don't switch. Um, so that's everything on this page. It's really about pattern recognition using what you already know. So we're gonna come back, we're gonna graph cotangent. Um, so make sure you've got that pattern down and I will see you in the next video.